If you are listening to this podcast, it means you're searching, searching for someone who understands you, someone who gets you. You are yearning to be understood and to belong. Welcome to the Someone Gets Me podcast, where we help smart, talented, and sensitive people navigate an often insensitive world. I am Diane Allen, your host. My roles as ambassador, author, speaker, and intuitive mentor for bright and talented people are woven into each episode. I have the experience and knowledge to educate and inspire as I have been there and I understand your unique intensities, sensitivities, and challenges. Welcome. Fast forward by activating flow. Today, I want to talk about how it is we can turn years into months or even days, or how a single epiphany, a single activation of our flow can categorically change outcomes in our lives forever. Hi, friends. I'm Diane here on the Someone Gets Me podcast to talk to you about ways to transcend disappointment, to come out of the place that waters down our energy and our focus and gets in our way. And we do that by activating flow. And one of the first things I would like to address, there's several things here in this podcast, but one of the first things is that disappointment, and when we feel disappointed, means that we are assigning our own belief system onto another. That maybe we're expecting another person to do, be, think, say, do, all of these things that we would do or that we think is correct or right or appropriate, yet it may not be the same for them. So when we put our expectations onto another, we set ourselves up for potential disappointment. So sometimes when I start to feel disappointed or that energy comes around, I allow myself to get curious. And what I say to myself is, hmm, from that vantage point, what would I see? It's called fluid viewing of looking at any situation or person or event from various viewpoints prior to making any discernment. Because the moment I allow myself to be disappointed, then that disappointment lowers my energy field, makes me feel heavy, could even make it so that you um, lower your immune system, right? Or even upset your stomach or make it so you don't sleep, depending on how severe you allow yourself to feel something like that. And in the end of it at all, it waters down and dilutes your dreams, your vision, your focus because it just sucked vital resources out of you. And most likely it was not necessary. So disappointment can get in the way. Another thing that um, stops us from hitting fast forward and activating flow is giving power and energy to naysayers, to the people who discourage us. And that includes our own self-talk. I have an unspoken rule that if I'm sharing an idea of mine or I'm talking about something and the listener says, let me play devil's advocate, I stop them. I do not want to hear it unless somebody wants to speak and give feedback and it's requested, of course, then I really work hard with myself and with others to speak feedback that encourages and supports and helps open the vision versus telling the person everything that's not right about it. And there's different ways to approach helping people see things without um, downing their energy, if you will, without draining them. And so the naysayers, the people who are discouragers, you know, they might even be in your own family. You know, I know a lot of people where I tell them, I said, you want to tell people who are closest to you what you're up to last. If you have a great idea or a brilliant idea or you're putting something together, tell them last and then they can say they supported you. Because often the people closest to us believe culturally that they had the license to tell us everything that's wrong with our idea. 
rather than the healthy thing to do is to ask questions and to listen and allow you, the person, to find your own resolve, your own answer. I mean, because at one point, building airplanes and flying or cars, anything that we use was a crazy idea by somebody that is now real and common. So just because somebody else doesn't under, understand your idea doesn't mean it's not valid or real. In fact, it's very valid and real. Because after all, your vision, your mission, what's in your heart desire to bring to the world um, is uniquely yours. It was not a conference call. It was a one-on-one -on -one call from your heart, your essence, your soul to the world. So it's up to us to cherish that inner fire, if you will, right? So there's plenty of reasons in our culture and in our world and in our minds to keep the status quo and just keep on going with whatever we're doing, ho-hum, ho-hum, and not make changes and let that inner fire burn and burn and burn and never really quite answer it, answer that call, right? And so the people who answer the call with all of its twists and turns tend to look back on their lives and see the richness of it in a different way than people who don't answer their call. So one of the ways we can answer our call and hit fast forward, if you will, because some of us have delayed gratification problems, right? Like we don't want to work forever on something. And we live in a culture that, you know, if you wait five minutes, it seems like it's too long, you know, with short attention spans and things like that. So sometimes we want to activate a level of flow within us because that flow helps us get on the other side of doubt so we can get past the doubt, past the a self, negative self-talk, and it gives us permission, the flow does, to stretch ourselves. And just like stretching muscles and being able to do that over and over and the muscle finally stretches further, it's the same thing with our own skills. It's the same thing with our own actions. So when we're in flow, we can stretch ourselves. We can go a little bit further than we thought we could. Now, it's not about going so far so fast that we create a crisis, which can happen. It's about stretching to the point where, okay, I'm working harder. I'm going a little faster. I'm moving beyond what I thought I could do, but I'm also able to tolerate it and do it. Like I had a friend of mine who was, this is years ago, he was going to start going to the gym and working out. And I'm like, okay. And then the next day he calls me and he's like, oh my God, I hurt everywhere. I can't even move. I can't get out of bed. I go, what did you do? He said, I went to the gym and I was feeling so guilty that I haven't worked out in a long time that I, you know, did like two hours on the treadmill and then I did all these weights and he started going on and on and on. He goes, and then I finished it off with swimming in the pool and sitting in a sauna and it made me feel really good, but now I can't get out of bed really. And I go, okay, well, did you hydrate yourself? What about electrolytes? When was the last time you did that much activity in a single day all in a row? And he started laughing. He goes, I have never done it like that. I said, well, maybe you went too far too fast. So it is possible to stretch too far too fast. It is possible to do those kinds of things where we get really motivated and we go over the top and then it actually slows us down. So it's important to say, what's my zone of proximal development? What's my tolerance in whatever thing you're doing? So we hit fast forward by getting in the flow, which means we're breathing, we're focused, and we're allowing ourselves to be free of, of distraction. So for me, I turn off my phone, I either put it on airplane mode and turn the volume down or turn it all the way off. For me, I make sure that I'm in a situation where I'm not distracted. So there's no, there's no music in the background that has lyrics so I can start, start singing to it in my head because that will happen. Or I'm not eating right then, you know, and so now I'm eating and trying to do something and that's, that doesn't work very well sometimes. And so you want to say, okay, well, what is it that I can do and be that allows me to be in flow? Breathing is very important. Breathing into the flow and giving yourself permission to focus and stretch. And giving your present, yourself permission to understand that as you go toward your vision, there will be moments of darkness and frustration, I call it. There's the dark night of the soul you hear people talk about. There's also this great frustration 
that we can feel like we've worked at this forever and we've done this and we've done that and it's not going anywhere. It's not doing what I wanted to do. All that mental frustration. Well, frustration and irritation gives you lots of extra energy to continue to go toward your vision. So you can look at it as a hindrance. Or you can choose to say, huh, I have all this extra energy from this frustration. How can I use it to navigate through this kind of dark, kind of murky time? How can I use this to be in flow in a way I can't explain, but that moves me faster? Meaning, I collapse years into months and months into days. And we collapse them by allowing ourselves to use all of our resources in a very focused manner toward what it is our inner vision is. Now, our inner vision is not just what's in our mind that we should do. Our inner vision is your heart's desire. It's that burning flame within you that is really wanting to express. And I work with a lot of people who, over the years who are very successful in lots of ways, but they seek me out because there's something more and they're not really sure how to get to it. And because I know how to get to it, I can help lead them to that something more. So by activating flow, we can fast forward that something more because it's trying to emerge anyway. It's kind of like a hose that you have kinked up. The water is on, but you have it kinked with your hand. Well, what happens when you open your hand and you let that water flow? It comes through really hard first and then gets its natural rhythm. It's the same thing. If you've been stuffing down your vision, that essence, your inner fire, it's not going to go out and it's going to keep reminding you. It is. It's going to keep reminding you. Show up. Come on. Do the thing. Show up. Write that book. Do that podcast. Make sure you serve this person over here because your inner heart's desire is always about service and kindness and goodness. It's always bringing something of benefit to the world. What's in our brain isn't always bringing something benefit to the world. Often it is, but it's not always. So you know it's your heart's desire when what you're, what's happening is creating you as that beneficial presence and bringing a benefit to the world. So a great affirmation you can use when you're in those dark nights, you know, and it's all frustrating and you're trying to focus and remember all these things I'm saying and you don't want to be disappointed and the naysayers are on you and even the naysayers in your head, right? A really good, I have two, two affirmations I use. One of them is my path is brighter and brighter. Because if I have an inner fire and I stoke the fire, it will get brighter and brighter. And the brighter and brighter it gets, the easier it is to see the path. So my path is brighter and brighter. That's one of my affirmations. The other one I use is I'm raising my vibration. Meaning, I'm bringing out my own energy brighter and brighter and brighter. So rather than letting frustration and irritation and anger drive down the energy, I can fast forward and collapse into my flow by using that energy to light the fire even brighter. Now, is that always easy? No, it's not always easy. Are there distractions? Yes. Lots of distractions in the world. And lots of old self-talk and beliefs. And sometimes we have to free ourselves from the old beliefs and the old self-talk so we can make the fire brighter. And that's okay. It's part of the journey. Doesn't mean you're messing it up. So when you're in the flow, you defy the odds. And so something that could take decades would take maybe a year or less. You see that you're valuable. You connect to your own inherent value and worth. You begin to connect to the fact that you have complete compassion on the inside as part of you. That's, that's forgiveness. Compa forgiveness means have compassion for. So I'm talking about that deep level of forgiveness or compassion for your own journey in, in this human world and for your own life and then the lives and journey of others. And then you also begin to realize that you're perfect, whole, and complete just as you are. And I, like you, are guilty of saying things to ourselves that are the opposite of perfect, whole, and complete. 
We all have done it. And some people still do it. And sometimes when the darkness comes into my life and it's frustrating and it's difficult, though it's very easy for my ego that's not my amigo to start going down that road. And you know what? None of it is true. The brain wants us to believe it's true to hold us back so it can hold on. But when we follow our inner fire and we keep stoking that fire, it collapses time and allows us to hit fast forward by activating our flow. And we activate it by paying attention, by being open to surprise of goodness. Now, I used to not like surprises because when I was younger, the surprises were all not very fun. But I like surprises now. So what if you woke up tomorrow and everything was completely different because you stayed in the flow long enough? Or what if you created anything in your world that had more meaning than you realized and it collapsed things time frame wise and you were in the flow of it? How about that surprise? Or how about the surprise of your being in someone's life or saying that thing that just came from your heart that helped change their world forever and hearing about that later. How about that surprise? When we pay attention to that inner fire in us and what it's trying to say and how it's trying to emerge and what's trying to happen, we end up with a, with a greater experience, a more rich experience of life. We also see that things that we desire and how we want our world to um, happen go a little faster than people would think, including us. Because by activating that flow and being non-attached to outcome, we've hit fast forward. Now, being non-attached to outcome is very important because what I've learned is no matter how great your vision is in the very beginning and how high that fire is, once you start going down that road and you get brighter and brighter and lighter and lighter, something changes and it's always better. It's not the initial vision. It's something better. It's bigger. Because as you grow and evolve and change and as you release the old negative things and the bondages and the stuckness, as you release those things and you activate your flow, you hit fast forward. So you transcend and you go past what you thought you could do and be. To me, that's the beautiful surprise. That's the trust and faith of it all. So you can hit fast forward on your dreams, your visions, your relationships, everything by being in the flow and being non-attached to the outcome. So just because you have a vision for what you'd like it to be, I suggest you make that more of a mile marker than a finish line. Because when you trust and you allow the flow and you release doubt, and you stretch yourself, you will, in fact, activate your inner flow and transcend what you currently think you can do and be. It's happened to me over and over. It happens with most of my clients because once they start learning about activating that deep level of that fire within them, the world changes for them. Their life experience changes. Your life experience changes. When you allow your path to come, become brighter because you're in your flow. And it's not that hard. It's about breathing. It's about trusting. It's about releasing all of your judgment and assessment of how things should be. Because believe it or not, no matter how amazing you are right here, right now, the world is always expanding. You are always expanding and growing. And what is totally relevant today may not be relevant in a week or a year or 10 years. So it's time to be flexible. It's time to be compassionate. It's time to realize that your essence is perfect, whole, and complete. And your responsibility is to bring that essence forward. And you know you're doing it when you're a beneficial presence on the planet and when what's happening through you is of benefit to all. So hit fast forward, get in the flow, allow yourself to release distraction, agitation, doubt, 
grief, do the work because it's not all easy. It's not, it's not peaches and cream, so to speak. It takes work, but it's worth it because when we hit fast forward, again, we can collapse time in our favor and we have to be willing to do the work. So remember, your path is brighter and brighter when you say it is. Now, because you have free will, you can always squish it all down. You can always make that bright flame into this barely a candle flicker. It won't go out, but you can make it into a candle flicker and you can act like it's not a thing and you know, I'm crazy and you can't believe you're listening to the podcast still and all these things. You can do that. It's not going to go out. It'll keep reminding you. They'll keep showing up. Things and people and situations will show up in your life that'll remind you. You have a bright mission. What are you doing running away from yourself? That's how most people find me. They're done running away from themselves. But I remember when I, I was running a treatment center and I had a couple of counselors that did that. They kept running from their own awareness and their own happiness. And they're still suffering. 20 years later, they're still looking outside of themselves for the answer when the answer was right there, right in front of them. They turned it down. So you have free will. Choose wisely. Until the next episode of Someone Gets Me. Remember, you're a rock star. You are here with a mighty purpose. So as you put your face to the sun, and as you step into your agency, know that you are fully supported. The entire universe comes together to support you the moment you make the decision to hit fast forward by activating your flow. Until the next episode of Someone Gets Me, be well. Are you tired of searching for someone to understand you? Join our Facebook group, Someone Gets Me. In this group, you will be able to connect with others who are intense, sensitive, smart, and talented. I share my insights and teachings, and you can connect with others in a real, authentic, safe forum. So join us today. Someone gets me.